Hey everyone, Mr. MC here. This is a guide for round 27 of the Manufacturer Series. Let's get this started. Bring yourself to the left and your first breaking point is going to be the 100 meter mark. Brake hard for a short moment. Slowly ease off of the brakes, turn in at the 50 meter mark and go over the yellow curb. Carefully start to accelerate and do not get the right wheels to go past the yellow curb here as that will trigger an off track penalty. Brake just before you pass the 100 meter mark. Quickly ease off of the brakes, just let the car cruise for just a moment so no braking, no throttle. Get the car straightened up and then quickly start to accelerate. Now you're going to bring yourself to the left side of the track and then you want to brake before you reach the 100 meter mark. Do not brake on the curbs, slowly ease off of the brakes and then gently start to accelerate your way out of this turn. Now go ahead and bring yourself to the right side of the track as you want to brake just before you reach the 50 meter mark. Get on the curbs to help the car rotate a bit more. Carefully accelerate, then brake when the track piece on the right joins with the main track. Get on the curbs again and quickly accelerate. Now because you have the sun blinding you, you can use these track marshals on the left as your next braking point. You brake hard for a short moment, slowly ease off of the brakes, get on the curbs, and then finally brake before the right and white area on the left ends. Don't take too much advantage of the track limits as you will get an off track penalty. But that is all for the lap guide, let's go ahead and talk about the strategies. For the qualifying session, you're going to have 10 minutes to try to get a good qualifying time. The racing soft tires will last a bit of a while here, so it is possible to go 3 or even 4 laps before you want to do the back out and jump back in strategy. For those who do not know what that is, this is basically where you jump out of the qualifying session. So you go to the pre-race menu and then you jump back in. That way you save yourself from doing an in-lap and uh, doing the whole animation sequence of the pit stop. But anyway, so since Red Bull Ring is a bit of a power track, you want to try to make use of the slipstream if possible. Just make sure you do not get too close to the car ahead of you. Otherwise, you risk having to slow yourself down, which will hurt your qualifying times. The thing is that since this is a power track, if you are in a handling car like the Porsche 911 RSR, you're going to want to make use of that slipstream so you can try to get a better qualifying time, thus giving yourself a better chance of having a better starting position. And that is pretty much it, just not much else to talk about. So just try to do two to four laps on one stint before you do the jump out and jump back in strategy. For the race strategy, this is where it gets a little interesting. So in terms of feel, you're going to want to push a bit more but do just a little fuel saving wherever you can. Ideally, you're going to want to do a little bit of short shifting when you go through the two left turns at around the area where the second and third sectors meet. So it's, it'll be coming up after this turn, so you'll know what I mean when I talk about the two left turns. But anyways, uh, you do not want to mega fuel save because that will slow your overall pace down and you don't want to push too much to the point where you have to refuel even more. In my case, when I did a couple of the test races, so not this one, this was when I was not recording, uh, I only had to refuel with 10 liters of fuel. So with the race settings, having it at seven liters per second for the refueling rate, you're going to spend a little more than one second uh, refueling. So it's going to be more of a splash and dash than anything else. But in terms of the tire strategy, this is where it gets pretty interesting because racing medium and hard tires are required for this race, but the racing soft tires are also available for this race. So the tire strategy that you're going to want to go with is, well, it's actually a little complicated. So if you're starting towards the very front of the race, you might as well throw on the racing soft tires and just try to make a break for it. 
At that point, you're just going to want to try to go literally as fast as you can to try to get away from everyone else. And you also have to think about two stopping this race if you do end up using the racing soft tires at some point. So when you're on the racing soft tires and the racing medium tires later on, you want to try to go as fast as you can to try to make up the time difference and hopefully, hopefully the one stoppers, if there are any, do not end up catching up to you. Now with the one stop, this one it is possible to pull off, however it's going to be pretty difficult. So you're using the racing mini tires for as long as you can until either your tires wear out or until you are forced to refuel. So in the case of the Porsche, uh, I am able to do 16 to 17 laps and that is with minimal fuel saving. For other cars, they might be able to do more or less laps on in terms of fuel. So make sure you do at least one practice race just so you can have a good idea of how many laps you'll be able to do before you have to go refuel. So with the one stop, if you are able to somehow keep up with those doing the two stop, then you're going to give them a lot of trouble because you're going to be able to undercut them. So when they go to their first or even second pit stop, you'll only be doing one pit stop. So you're definitely going to have the opportunity to pass them at some point without actually having to put in any effort because they're in the pit stop and you're just driving by. However, the problem with the one stop is that if you end up in battles or if you end up pushing the car too much, the tires will wear out early on and that can be a huge problem especially if the two stoppers are now right behind you after they've done their first or even second pit stop. So with them on their fresher tires, they're going to pressure the heck out of you and that could potentially force you into making a mistake. So as you see here, second and third place are on the two stop, I'm on the one stop, my tires are wearing out and they were right behind me in which they forced me into a mistake. So that's going to end up costing me a lot of time and I'm not going to be able to catch up to first or second place. And don't forget, if you are starting towards the back, you can start on the racing hard tires to get those tires out of the way. And then after that, it is up to you whether you want to go with the racing medium tires for the rest of the race or only use the racing medium tires for a short couple of laps and then do the rest of the race on the racing soft tires. Either way, you only want to use the racing hard tires for one lap or as few laps as you can. That way you do not lose too much time being on the slower tire compound. So for example, let's say you can do 15 laps on the racing soft tires and you only have to do one lap on the racing hard tires, that's going to leave you with three laps on the racing medium tires. But that is just an example that I just want to put out there. If your car can do more laps on the racing soft tires, then you can definitely go for it. But let's go ahead and quickly summarize all this up. So you can do the one or two stop. The one stop offers much better pace and you don't have to worry too much about the tires wearing out since you are spending a bit more time on the pit stop changing tires twice. With the one stop, you can undercut those on the two stop because you're only pitting once, but you are going to be on the defensive all race long because you're going to be on the slower tire compounds for the entire race. If you are starting in the back, start on the racing hard tires to get those slower tire compounds out of the way. And then it's up to you whether you want to do the one or two stop. And in terms of the fuel, just do a little bit of short shifting. Uh, where you want to shift is going to depend on each car, but for a handling car like the Porsche, you want to shift just before or right when the shift bar on the bottom of the screen starts to blink. And when you come across these two left turns over here in the clip right now, you can do a little more short shifting to save a bit more fuel. But once again, just try to maintain a good pace. So don't make a fuel save to the point where you're slowing yourself down. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this guide. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. So this is Mr. MCA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.